There she this is. This is going to be distracting. Having something different going on up there. I think they're probably going to switch over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> meeting uh, of March 26th for the Community Planning and Development Commission. And the first item on the agenda is a modification to the 40-hour plan approval for 26 Haven Street, also known as 30 Haven, for the Reading Foot and Ankle Specialists. Do we have anything to discuss? Um, hi, good evening. Thank you for having me again. I, I was here about a month ago. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm Caroline Gauthier, the owner of Ready for the Angle Specialist, and I'm seeking a waiver for the office to use greater than 3% for the first floor of 30 Even Street. I'm interested in the suite at 50 Even Street. Um, I was asked to come back with um, a, a a floor plan or in the basic floor plan to discuss a little bit of the flow of, of, uh, of the design of the screen. So, um, is it okay if I go to the screen? To Certainly. Explain a bit? <coughs> so, this is Even Street here, um, and um, the uh, office space, Even Street. Um, the, my idea of, of um, of why, why, why this is a good location is uh, what I anticipate uh, patients to do is since even street is a one-way street I anticipate all the patients who will be coming to see us at the office to go down even street and most likely try to seek parking along even street um, if none are found um, our patient will be aware that there's a parking lot behind the building um, from my experience um, and being a local user of, of our town, I've, I've tried to park on Even Street many times and couldn't, and I've used the back, you know, back parking spot a lot. So the hope is patient will park here, walk <coughs> either up front or in the back of, of the building, and then use this entryway that actually has an handicap um, um, and an handicap. There's stairs, but also an handicap um, rail that people with disability issues or having a certain mm. um, So, um, let's start in the back. Um, so, for a patient to get access to the suite, they would have to walk the corridor, and the idea was to 
have a door that would give access to that common hallway between the dentist's office and, and the suite so that people can come in and um, enter the reception area where there would be a, a waiting area and then a billing front office there. The other option that patient could come in um, was uh, is either through this door which gives uh, access directly to the suite or this door that's actually 52 Avon Street where they can come in and get access to the side at the side door. So this current design is made that the front door is being used. My initial thoughts were that this door would be used as an exit, emergency exit only. The door would stay but just be locked so that people could use the door that's about eight feet away from this main entrance to provide comfort uh, to my patient that will be sitting in the waiting area and being exposed to all the weather that we have, either cold weather or the heat that we kind of experience during the summer. Um, that was an issue the last time I was in front of, of, of you and so um, this current design shows that what I have to do is build a half wall to stop the, the draft of cold weather coming in um, and then um, kind of redesign a little bit the office area so that there's a better flow for patient to kind of enter through this, this area there. I have one four treatment room. I currently have two treatment rooms and eight um, chairs in my waiting area. My hope is to double that space. I have four treatment rooms and hopefully get to 16 chairs, which right now I can only fit 13 in this current design. Um, and then the back of the office is for extra use uh, and ADA approved a design um, utility or toilet area, uh, an office area. Yeah employee um, uh, area and then storage and utility rooms. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So <clears throat> in this plan the uh, preferred entrance would be into the, the corridor? That would be preferred. Okay. Yeah. Well the doctor's office I've been to or trying to control this environment. Most of my patients are either minor patients or elderly patients that need the driver. So I will have a lot of patients waiting for their loved one in the waiting right. area. So getting access um, to the, the weather will be the hard area to control, trying to provide the heat and the, control the drift and control the heat during the summertime. Yep. Any questions? Uh, I have a question about the proposed window treatments. Mm -hmm. Right now, are you still proposing to put up more of a, uh, a blocking shade or a no, tinting? No, I was. So the billing office area needs to be HIPAA compliant, but not the mm -hmm. waiting area. So I have um, specs of my thoughts, and I would appreciate your um, putting something that would control the heat but it still can see and clear you can see through the area for the waiting area and then have something a little more opaque at least a bend of it so that just people cannot look inside the suite and see information of patient in, in the, the section where the billing office is okay. I, I think the dark one they use that at the um, karate place I believe it's can see in, but it's got a reflection. You can see through because the the building is facing south, so it gets quite hot in the summertime. Um, and then that's what <coughs> what PDE used is actually what they use in our the whole window. But I would just want to control my patient's privacy. Right. Okay. Now I have a question for. Uh, Julie, so are they going to be held to these plans or can they make minor adjustments? You guys will talk about the doorways and mm -hmm. the window treatments um, and then I think things that are interior that don't really impact what they're proposing with regards to that um, could probably be modified if needed. Okay. Um, that would be my comment. So. What are you thinking about for signage? Um, I would I want their office name, obviously what the Zynga sign is currently is, and uh, would respect all the standard of the design that, um, that you guys have. 
We have a master sign yeah. plan for this building. <coughs> you do need to comply yeah. with, and if they propose something different, they'll have to come back to you for approval. Okay. I'm just I'm looking at the PDA, and like the doorway, it's so unclear that that's the door, that that's the entrance, due to the signage. So. Mm, just curious how folks will know go in here knowing that that the door that looks like a door is actually an exit <clears throat> I would probably have a small letter inside that says use next door like a lot of facilities have <coughs> multiple doors but with be more lettering inside that would just have an arrow pretty small <coughs> please use door to the right yeah. I mean, it's. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the. The, the small door at the very back, that's actually a hallway access door, right? It is. So yeah. It would be staff only. Yeah. Um, very unwelcoming in that area. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then that would be for the, the staff. Um, okay. okay. Any other concerns? Nope. No other concerns. No. I mean, I think. <coughs> Okay, we have a uh, draft decision. Um, the requires a waiver from the uh, existing building plan to permit the additional space on the, the ground floor. Um, we have a, a draft. Um, or an open space for the window treatment in the front door. Was that to be filled in? Or? I didn't know if you wanted to put some specifics. I wasn't sure what they were going to propose with regards to the window treatments. And, okay. um, and then I didn't know what condition you might want with regards to the front door. Like if you were okay with them having that dedicated front door be exit only, or if you were going to... Um, I think it's... I think it's case. Excuse me. I'm go sorry. Ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was, I was considering that the the front door as as a preferred exit um, is reasonable, and the window treatment, the condition we should probably add a note about the the HIPAA uh, requirement. Right. So. That, um, so they're going to leave that waiting. You're going to leave that waiting space like pretty much visible from the street, and then just have a band of some kind of thing in the billing office. Yeah. And that's acceptable to you guys. Yeah. yeah, as long as it's not fully opaque like PDA. You know, preferred would be you know leaving uh, a foot at the at the the base and you know foot foot and a half at the top of the window that would be clear with the, the obscure the band uh, across the the main part of the uh, the glass. So do you want to specify like what percentage of the window you're going to allow have that or or <clears throat> a lot of things can go wrong without yeah. some more detail on how that's going to work okay. right um but might i recommend that say the minimum required to um, meet hippo requirements for the billing office for the billing office yeah either that or to have a more definitive plan to be reviewed by the town planner that way we well both yeah. basically specify that the we understand that the billing office uh, must meet the tip requirements and uh, request a uh, an as built plan if you will to be reviewed before, by the we don't want as built we want yeah, before, before, before built it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is a window treatment it's not something that's that's hard to change yeah but so but if we don't need to make them change something that's yeah okay. okay so 
that will be the condition for the window treatments. Right. And then, um, do you want anything with regards <coughs> to the door, just to, or just a note that the front door, that dedicated door off of their um, tenant space can be used as an exit only? Just a note about that. Yeah, just just include the note. But not an emergency exit only, an actual exit only, correct? No, How it's emergency. How would you do it emergency exit only? So that's different than what you She's trying to yeah. prevent drafts, I think, so. Yeah, that's fine. Well, okay. Right. Sitting out and drinking will cause drafts. Right, but if it's emergency only, then people aren't going out too frequently. Yeah. So it's a front door, but it, that isn't a front door. It's on the front of the building, but it's mm -hmm. <laughs> On the sidewalk, yes. Um, so, do we have that captured? Well, that's what I wanted. I mean. Okay. Um, how to word that? Let's see. I mean, I have it in the findings above under front door, but it's underlined where I say it's emergency exit only um, we don't need to condition we don't need to say anything in the conditions about it unless you want to specify that something specific about I don't know I mean in terms of from the question before as long as this entrance is on this side which kind of increases the chances that folks are coming in from, yeah I mean, I know we can't do much on the interior fit out, but if there's a switch. So you mean as long as that cor this corridor, corridor entrance is on the front, to the third, front. yeah. Sure. Okay, we can put in the. I can make a condition that's like the the front. Right. The dedicated front door can be emergency exit only as long as an interior door off of the common hallway is towards the front of the it's, building. It's towards right. the haven side. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and the listed address will be 50, not 30, correct? 50, yeah. 50 or 32? Well, the, the waiver is going to be for the whole building. Right, understood. Right? So <coughs> this tenant space yeah. is 50, but the building is 26, a.k.a. 30 Haven, so it's right. a little. <laughs> <laughs> so it just, as we're doing that, it just, is there anything else that we can about the entire building, you know, not specific to this space, put into this? If this is a waiver for the whole building, for the, you know, management company, Etc. You know, I don't know. Again, I don't know what the initial signage um, regulations were, but well, there's there's a master signage plan, and I, and I think there's no there's no uh, need at this point to change the master signage. Plan no, I'm not saying that. No. The my objective is to activate the front of the PDA at, at the moment if we can because it's silent if, if that's a word for I don't know if that's really right. <laughs> something that we can throw into this yeah um. well it's um. this is not the entrance right here it's, and I don't even think they use that one The context of, of the waiver request um, is for the new tenant. Yeah. Um, I think that the conditions that we already have for the, the rest of the building need to stand. Okay. Just wanted Keep to ask our the life question. as simple as we can. Yeah, no, that's fine. But I agree, if there were any issues with the building, that would be a good time to address them. I'm assuming we're not aware of any issues with the building. <laughs> I mean, PDA was, you know, didn't tip them over the threshold. Right. Um, and we and we did, I don't know if you were on the commission at yeah. the time, but they did review the window yeah. treatments mm -hmm. at, a, at a meeting. Yeah. Um, and so I don't know that there's too much we can do to take back, to walk back on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. 
So can you, um, okay. if we take a look at our draft decision, we added some verbiage. Uh, I believe that on the waiver applicability, we should um, increase it, round, round it up to 40%. Okay. Um, not, not to be, uh, so that we don't get back here <laughs> as often. We've got a comment on the window treatments on the door usage. Are you happy with the vote? I'm happy with the vote. Okay. Okay. All those in favor of accepting the 40R? Uh, no, first you make the motion, correct? <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> uh, motion to accept the um, modification to 40R plan approval for 30 Haven Street as amended. Second. Second. All in favor? All right. Great. All right. I think you're good. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be in touch tomorrow. Thank you. I'm not very good at this. But <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I had to do it. You're, you're usually the one making the motion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Change the seats. Okay. And then you have a continuance request for Johnson Books. <clears throat> yes. We need a motion for it. Oh. Uh, motion to continue the minor amendment PUD special permit for Johnson Woods to May 7th. Yeah. Second, sorry. <laughs> Colin, oh. <laughs> Do we have a, a specific time? Um, I think actually 7.30. 7.30, okay. All in favor? Okay, so the public hearing, I guess the public hearing is, is that um, for the PUD special permit? It's not a hearing. Ah, okay, minor amendment. Next we have planning updates and other topics. So you can continue your discussion of the 40 yard design guidelines. We have prepared some um, Based on your comments last time, we've just made some modifications to the maps. Um, Andrew's working on some cool 3D stuff, not quite ready for unveiling yet. Um, and then we have some large format maps if you want to delve in. And it looks like there's some people here from the community. Um, so, And then there's also minutes to review just for February 12th um, at this point. Okay. So, so we have... Um, the new maps is. Do you want to pull them up? So, this is just a general base map of kind of the downtown area. Um, on the screen here, I highlighted some buildings that Nick kind of pointed out last time, MF Charles, um, Lincoln and Prescott the Christopher's building and a few others just getting the exact heights of them because the last maps we did elevations which if I switch to this map here again the chloropleth on elevations but Nick was correct um, that when you have actual building heights versus elevations they do differ very much so rather than elevations where you can see um, here the MF Charles and I believe this is postmark um, they're labeled as the same group of elevations but they're the 24 foot height difference so mm. trying to get um, more exact building heights is something I'll be working on and it, okay. uh, apparently we don't have a lot of data <coughs> on it but we're doing our best to go through the decisions and stuff of major buildings to at least get the heights of those and recently approved projects so we can yeah. use those as at least guides. Existing 24 foot height difference or proposed once the post market's built? Uh, that is proposed. Okay, yeah, so currently might be. Yeah. Possible. Now is that the proposed for the actual building height from the lowest point or the highest point? 
um, because that's on a hill and therefore I assume it's 45 feet from the mid-grade. So the heights in recent decisions are based on how we define height in the mm -hmm. bylaw. And um, I don't know if you remember when Postmark came in, they, they asked for a 19-foot height waiver. Um, and they were granted it. So okay. I do not remember that. Yeah. <laughs> but that building is not built yet, so you're not going to necessarily perceive that. You're supposed to probably perceive a different height yeah. differential. Oh, Except that 64 is a challenging number in there because of the way the building is in actuality. The, the, the frontage on Haven Street is not. 64. Right, and you're not going to, you are okay to grant the waiver because you're not going to perceive the 64 right. foot height from yeah. the street. So, yes. And the, I'm just, in terms of setting guidelines, putting that 64 up on Haven Street makes mm -hmm. it look scarier than I think it is. Right. Yeah, the uh, I understand that we d we don't have the GIS tool that lets us look at the um, approved but not yet built structures. But if there were a way to uh, to note that, uh, it would be helpful because we have quite a f we've got the postmark, we've got the uh, e-mark, we've got. Yeah, um, you know, we, we've got several hundred uh, units worth of projects which are approved and will will shortly, we hope, be under construction. Mm -hmm. And it would be nice to know uh, where we're at. I mean, I, I took a drive drive around, including the um, Schoolhouse Commons, the building, which is not actually within the district, but is one of the tallest structures. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Sanborn School. Yeah. The Sanborn School. I was looking yeah. for the yeah. heights. Right. The Sanborn School is I behind Town Hall. Yeah. Schoolhouse Commons right. is on Woburn Street. D they're different projects. So this is Sanborn. Okay. Just for those watching at home. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the old middle school is the, is the building. I'm, right. I thought it was. Um, it's an this? old schoolhouse, um, but what Schoolhouse is Commons is going in the St. Agnes building. Um, Okay, but I thought the the sign on the street. Um, I thought it was schoolhouse condos. Yes, that's correct. Okay. <laughs> village, writing the woods. Yeah. yeah, writing village woods. Um, <laughs> okay. We don't come up with these names. <laughs> okay. The uh, name them after the streets. <laughs> the rest of this, I, I think that we need to uh, continue the discussion with more of the board. Um, so come back to it uh, when we next have the majority of our people here. Well, I've got a, a question to keep out there. What's the goal? Thank you. Is the goal supposed to be to create more housing? <coughs> supposed to create a more vibrant downtown where people are actually walking around, bring in more business? What is the actual goal for this? My understanding, and I can't speak for you guys, you guys determine what the goal is, but my understanding is that it's to address adjacencies between different land uses and where the district abuts um, long-time existing neighborhoods of a different character. Um, so. Well, it's actually, I guess it's to, to consider um, guidelines that would be more uh, sensitive to the disparate uses mm -hmm. in the because it is the 40 r district, it is the downtown district, um, but there's still a lot of existing um, non-conformant um, properties. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to bulldoze the whole thing and turn it into uh, something down by Oak Grove. The my, my understanding, and I'm also mm -hmm. kind of thinking about what's the bigger picture, what's the second half of the sentence, which is, was that, you know, given that there are all these projects mm -hmm. on the line, mm -hmm. this is now the opportunity to put some protections in for the, the residents um, without putting too many restrictions on um, the ability to, you know, handle some of those um, non-conforming uses or, you know, providing some opportunities if some um, site assemblages right. are, are there. But 
you know, being sensitive to all of the different kind of mini communities that are within this mm -hmm. area. Yeah. And so just kind of thinking about, I mean, I don't want to use it as a <coughs> plan, but it's almost like, uh, you know, stitching into this to make sure that it, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a more complete whole. But I have a question in terms of like, do we have a, a vision for what that ends up looking like. And I don't know if that's part of this or not. It would help probably, but... Mm -hmm. uh, I, I suspect that the vision is to um, hold off or at best, at worst delay additional uh, development at this point. And we've got a lot in, in the works it's going to change the character of what's there now. You know, we know what the um, likely targets are. The, the existing uh, multifamily, there's a fair amount of multifamily on the, on the far side of the um, train station, um, which is outside the district but is also something that, that may um, come up for redevelopment, uh, triggered perhaps by the Reading Village, if not some other activity in that area. So I think we, we've, a, we need a good um, understanding of what's, what's there, what's approved, what's in the works. And keeping an eye on such things as the Eaton Street, uh, Lakeview Ave. Um, it's as if we want our own safe harbor for the downtown district. We want to basically uh, slow roll any additional projects in that uh, area. Well, I would like to change that to instead of slow roll, ensure that any additional projects do not negatively impact uh, those mean, residences. Yeah. I'd yeah. agree that with that. Yeah. I mean, I mean yeah. slow roll may be the end result, but the goal would be to protect them. Yes. Okay. And because we can't control when private property is going to right. go up for sale and transfer and be yeah. redeveloped. So, but we can control the nature of what that development looks like. Yeah, right. that's exactly and okay. I think we're trying to balance the goal of economic development and the downtown has been identified in the economic development mm -hmm. plan as a priority development area. Right. It's the area where we've said we're okay with development in this area. Mm -hmm. The community has adopted that economic development mm -hmm. plan. So we're okay with it. We just want to have managed growth. Yeah. We want to have growth that fits with what Reading sees as its community and, and blends in with the fabric of the community. And as Tony said, does not, you know, overtly right. negatively right. impact right. the residents that are there um, and the character of that yeah. neighborhood. Right. Being careful. Okay. Yeah. If the tape recording all of this good text <laughs> <laughs> on TV. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's good. It's very would, uh, would you like to comment, John? If I may, thank you, David. Um, I'm sorry, I, I think I stepped in a few minutes or seconds before you guys got started, but um, and, and I don't want to. I liked your, your comments. I, I think I like the direction it's going. I guess the only thing that I would like to add from my perspective, and I understand that may be different than, than your perspective, but. Um, my view of this, I think I might have mentioned it at a uh, ZBA meeting where the Gould Street project had come forward and said, this is not about the Gould Street project. My mm -hmm. point is this. Um, the, the general issue, the context in which this issue arose was um, the, the abutting uh, neighbors um, right. were, were raising questions about the way in which the, that particular project integrated with them or adversely affected them. Um, and and I, I raise this, and I would just ask you to keep this in mind. In your, uh, I, I think this is the, the zoning bylaw in the, the downtown smart growth district zoning bylaw, which talks about criteria for approval and criteria for denial. Uh, and it, it, 
the general one that I was focusing on basically says, obviously for criteria for approval, it says any, any extraordinary adverse potential impacts of the project on nearby properties have been adequately mitigated. And similarly, uh, criteria for plan denial, it is not possible to adequately mitigate significant project impacts on nearby properties. To me, the goal is uh, in a situation where it became necessary for the board, for the commission to have to rely on that as a basis for either approving or denying, or I'm thinking more in terms of denying, or just, just leveraging that issue, you need to have adequate definition or substance to the term when it says adverse potential impacts. It, you can't simply rely, although I have often argued, that the position should be deny it because of its its adverse impacts haven't been addressed, but unless they're adequately somehow um, defined or or bounded in your guidelines, you would not legally be able to rely on that as a as a defense. And so I just think that the, the goal here to me is to put some kind of meat on that bone, um, so that if you are in a position where you're arguing or, or discussing with a developer, whether or not it is uh, effectively um, meeting any adverse impacts, you can you can define what those impacts are. That's why the last time I relied on that on the language that's in the uh, in the um, the uh, DHCD guidelines that are kind of broad in general, but it, but it just gives you some some parameters about uh, you know massing and scale and uh, consistency uh, with uh, the existing building. So I, I, that's, I guess I'm going off now, but I think the point is mm -hmm. give yourself some language in the guidelines that give you teeth in order to rely on what is your only basis to, to deny it, or, or from this perspective, the basis to deny it. It doesn't, really adequately, it doesn't adequately mitigate impacts. You need to define those impacts. I don't know if that's helpful or not, but that, that's my only point. And I think from our perspective, it's being able to point to something that helps us define what's allowable and what <clears throat> is the limitations. I think, you know, I'm just looking at the, um, the, the, the minutes mm -hmm. from the meeting yeah. here and thinking about Chapin Ave in that there was a comment saying, <laughs> you know, this building is actually shorter than some of the, you know, McMansions being built turned around on Main Street. So someone's concerned about its massing. If this were a single family building, it might not, you know, that yeah. those impacts might be viewed differently. Mm -hmm in the same way but if we had some standard that we were able to say this is this is what it is then some of those feelings in the middle that make it a little hazier might be easier for us to sort through using a tough example probably but well it's it's one of the things that I've struggled with and, and has probably been evident is that the um, just because the um, proposed development is taking advantage of an opportunity that, that wouldn't necessarily be there. Uh, and that's good work on the language. <clears throat> the existing properties have the right to basically tear down and rebuild same footprint within uh, their existing uh, property. If a uh, developer comes in and proposes something which is no worse than that, we have no, in, in my own mind, we have no legitimate reason for denying. You know, basically, if your neighbor can, re can build a McMansion, then somebody else can, can build two McMansions, and, and there's really, there's nothing that we can, um, appropriately prevent 
Yes, sir. So, I mean, the only thing I, I push back on that is that um, depending on what the neighbor is, uh, the the fact that the the probable development in the downtown Smart Growth District is a mix of multi multiple uses, <coughs> mixed use, commercial use, retail use. Um, to me, that's a different characteristic from whatever the existing uh, structure was that is about to be McMansionized. So I, I hear your argument, David, and, and, and there is certain certain amount of merit to it, but the fact that the other project that's coming in uh, it is different in kind and substance, um, I think enables you to push back on having it McMansionized in the same way that, if you will, that, that the house could. And I believe that we do that. Uh, as whenever we can in, in, in the ways that we can. No doubt. I'm just suggesting yeah. codify that um, so that you can rely on that rather than just the, the fact that you might have done it as codify it. So again, you can rely on it if you need to uh, as a ground to, uh, to deny or condition mm -hmm. a project. Well, I, I think you've pointed out that it's already in the um, in the bylaw, if you will. But very broadly, I guess is all I'm arguing. That, that, um, well, yes. I, I'm not sure I know how to make it less broad. Uh, Fair point. <laughs> but that, that, I think, is, is the task. I, I just think that the one sentence that's in the bylaw in the section on criteria for approval and criteria for den denial um, requires some more substance within your guidelines on which you can, and, and I'm not suggesting I know what they are right now, but they require something mm. more. Now, okay. I don't think you'd be legally sufficient if you merely relied on that one sentence for denying it when you did not have corresponding language in your design guidelines to somehow support it. Understood. <laughs> okay. The um, we have in the proposed uh, zoning bylaw uh, modifications, I believe, the discussion on the transitional areas. This might be something that we should look at um, using uh, in this context. Mm -hmm. Possibly, but I don't think it'll work. The transitional areas tend to be between different zonings. Here we're looking at the same zone but different uses. Unless you're also looking at the edges of the district. Right. Yeah. And then, then it potentially could be. I mean, some of the ideas might, might right. have merit carrying over, but I think last time you talked about like trying to take like an ideal kind of standard if that, that's possible, mm -hmm. site this downtown and, and putting your ideas on it and then seeing how it might apply to other properties downtown right. as like a starting point for like whether there's a way to standardize an approach or I mean, I mean it's really tricky. It, it is and the reason it's mm -hmm. tricky is because there's so many uh, parameters, so many variables. Yeah. There's a difference between if you've got four houses and somebody wants to put up we'll just call it the box 45 feet high to the edge of the, of the lot and you know you've got two houses here and two houses on that side and right in the middle of it somebody wants to put up a box versus the, just the opposite somebody has one single house they buy the other three they want to put up a box and have one home which one do you allow which one do you not allow plus you have the underlying zoning of business B right mm -hmm. Yeah. where they can pretty much build to the edges. And right. go up 45 feet. Right. With just a site plan, which mm. you know, don't yeah. really have yeah. the ability to deny. So. Right. It's complicated. <laughs> um, but I mean, that doesn't mean we shouldn't start somewhere no. and try to right. generate at least a conversation about what so might work. So um, maybe there's, can, is there some chunkable pieces that we can, instead, I think maybe we may be daunted by the fact that all of mm -hmm. these different factors, mm -hmm. is there something that we can kind of break down and start thinking about? And even if we understand that it creates a spider web, out from it, at least it's kind of one smaller piece that might not keep getting kicked down the road for, for these discussions. Right. We can 
pick something. I don't know. I don't know what those chunks are, though. That's the question. Is it an area or is it a concept like height? Yeah. I don't know. Well, I'll throw this one out to the public. Assume that somebody's going to build a building. It doesn't matter what it, the building is for. And it's a very large building. We'll call it the box. Next to your home. And there's nothing that can be done to stop it. It's allowed, it's permitted, whatever. What would you like? What kind of rules do you want to say, okay, well, all right, if you can build it, fine, but have the entrance away from the house. Maybe not allow traffic around the back. Are there any real rules that you can think of? Any, any conditions that you'd like to at least be able to apply and say, this will at least help mitigate some of it? I think the big one here that I see, hey, I'm Adrian. You know, yeah. uh, I think the big one here is the setback when it applies to the box mm -hmm. and butter, which is a dwell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. use that term. Uh, I think that's the big one. And then mass is the other one in terms of proportional to the area so that it's not three stories above the houses that surround. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't, I, I don't think, and I don't think the law really will permit you to do this. I think you can't, not, cannot legislate what that box will look like. Mm -hmm. But in order to ameliorate the problems that you're going to have with the box moving into a neighborhood, you need to encourage the kind of collaborative effort that we saw with Green Street, mm -hmm. and that he listened. Yeah. And uh, because he's got to be a neighbor. Right. Uh, I think that's one of the things I'd like to see. And that, that's an intangible, but I think the, the whole point is, if he's coming into the neighborhood, he's putting up a box, certainly he's going to meet all the requirements mm -hmm. that the town has for fire and safety and policing and so on. Mm -hmm. But that he also needs to be cognizant of what the other neighbors are like and not stick out like a sore thumb. Those are design issues. Mm -hmm. Also, not intrude and impose. Those are setback and mass issues. So those are the big ones, as far as I can see, in all the discussions that we've had. Okay. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you. I, I would absolutely agree. Um, setback. Um, mass, height, uh, those are all obviously related. I, I would totally agree with but I would go a little bit further again. Um, I'm not totally convinced, and I'm not by any stretch of the imagination uh, an expert, um, so I don't hold myself out as being correct in this regard, but I do respectfully disagree uh, as to whether or not DHCD guidelines permit you to have some say downtown smart growth district on architectural style um, and I know Nick at the last uh, meeting that suggested that he questioned whether DHCD would approve any guidelines but in looking at the guidelines last time I, I mentioned um, uh, some reference in, this is within their their document their DHCD guidebook creating design standards for 40 yard districts um, and there's a section that talks about exterior building appearance um, and you know this is in some degree you know uh, scale mass uh, being, being con um, similar consistent but there's also a section interesting that talks about limiting architectural styles design standards could be used to direct building exterior appearance to incorporate basic design principles from a desired architectural style or styles this would be especially relevant to 40 yard districts that overlay historic districts or include historic buildings. And I know we're not there, but I'm just suggesting, um, that's what that says, uh, but I'm just suggesting that at least within the 40 yard concept from DHCC, DHCD's standpoint, they seem to suggest that local municipalities do have a little bit of latitude um, to, to try to direct architectural style uh, in areas where it, it is immediately affecting uh, about its neighboring uh, residences or neighboring structures. So I just, I personally have kind of a, on the one hand and on the other hand aspect of that, on the one hand, I think, you know, really thinking about making sure that the style and the design, you know, fits into the neighborhood is something that would make sense particularly for this area. On the other hand, we have no idea what the future is going to look like. And we could have picked, you know, 
the 60s and 70s style, which has turned out to not really <laughs> yeah. withstand the test of time. So we want to be careful not to constrain it and end up with a, right. you know, something that mm. we, in retrospect, did not like. I, I totally, <laughs> it, it, it's a real dilemma. I was thinking, I don't know, David, whether you said it the last time, I think you did, that um, if you go down the road that I, I suggested, um, your point is well taken. It could even be that the existing, uh, the existing residences could convert somehow uh, and all end up, you, you may end up affecting that box and having it be an architectural style that's consistent with the existing residential structures that are there um, based on this language and then 10 years down the road or 20 years down the road have the residences that sell the property to a big box and and you know where we got and then I, I agree but you know I'm not sure which comes first but that's the conundrum I, I would like to suggest one other thing which I know is really out there but um, just food for thought um, and then I'll shut up uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I will. Um, because it is going to be your your handful to figure this out. But the comment about um, the existing business B, uh, it's in it's within the existing business B, and, and it's the underlying district. Um, it's a far-fetched idea. But if if we really, if 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 the town really wanted to tackle this issue. Um, it could conceivably change the zoning bylaw, um, which would somehow put some constraints on on businesses within the existing business uh, underlying district um, in areas where they are also in an overlay district, which might which might impact uh, existing other structures, such that their ability to uh, to fall back on that on that underlying right could somehow be constrained. It would require a zoning bylaw change. I recognize, and, and I and I recognize um, in my years of experience at the town meeting that that would likely uh, be laughed out of the out of the auditoriums. But but just food for thought that you know that there conceivably are some some concepts that that might that might be able to be asserted if folks really wanted to raise these issues and debate these issues um, in the appropriate form. My goodness, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. um, well, all the work that we've done over the years on zoning, the Zoning Advisory Committee, when we did the comprehensive update of the zoning bylaw, we never changed any of the zoning districts. We modified the language of zoning. We um, we updated and modernized zoning, but we never took one district and said, let's call it something else. Now, that's not to say we couldn't in the future, but I think that that's a, um, a pretty big change that, as we all know, requires um, a heavy burden of affirmative yeses in, from town meeting. So to get that vote, I think, would be a challenge. I, I certainly don't disagree. I just threw it out. Yeah. No, it's you know, a good idea. Just. Well, I mean, we have we have done it. Basically, it's changes to the zoning map, which is which, whether or not you coordinate that with changes to the um, district um, definitions. Now, the changing the map is is a separate uh, process. Um, I'm pretty sure that we don't know enough about where we are or where we in, where we would like to be to propose um, map changes at this point. And the most recent one was, in fact, the the overlay district expansion. Um, Which was what it was supposed to be originally. Yes. So it wasn't well, really it was mostly. I mean, not maybe with a few. Yeah. But um, it was supposed to be back in 2009. The district was supposed to be downtown. Right. Yeah. We we also we had attempted to get the far side of the Lincoln Street mm -hmm. and, and so forth included, which would have addressed some of the issues that have come up since. Potentially. <clears throat> yeah. Yes. Virginia Adams. I had a comment and perhaps a question. Um, 
I think this item has been on your agenda for at least three times, hasn't it? Um, I haven't been to all the meetings, but I know you've been working on this subject. But I can't understand why there isn't anything written yet for you to start delving into and working from a concrete base, if you will. Um, and uh, just a comment about guidelines. Guidelines are a living document. They can change. So you, if you get something established, at least you have your format. And then later on, if it works or doesn't, you can tweak it and uh, modify it. Well, we have the, what we've been talking about is the possibility of amending or uh, expanding um, the design guidelines which were part of the original uh, downtown smart growth district uh, approval so there is a document there is a design guidelines document it's well established and it's being followed uh, in terms of the uh, I've forgotten what it, the angle of attack kind of some of the uh, things. It's it's not in front of us at the moment. Uh, You've gone back and forth about looking at visuals. Um, I mean, it's hard to know how to start writing something yeah. at this point. Like, I think that's partly why. And then, um, you know, it's not the only. <coughs> well, we started we started looking <laughs> at. Additional guide. I've forgotten how we got into. Well, we started with a discussion of, of right. breaking okay. it into sub districts. That was like the first right. night that you guys talked about this, and you decided to just look at redoing the design guidelines mm -hmm. instead of creating sub districts. Um, and then there's been a couple discussions um, regarding mapping, and Nick had put together some initial feedback right. that you guys looked at last time. Um, so you know, it probably is ripe to start looking at language. Um, yeah. Yeah. The the. Um, we abandoned the subdistrict because we, I guess, discovered with uh, DHCD that it would not, it would be uh, too much work and not what we're actually trying to get done. And it would require going back to the town meeting, I think. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, so we end up looking at um, additional considerations in the design guidelines. Which would be, I guess, um, location aware or yeah. or conditional. Yeah. Conditional. Okay. Given this condition, you need to meet these requirements. Yeah. Right. Okay. So maybe and then it's it's words and visuals in conjunction. Yeah. And, yeah. and then yeah, having sort of like that <clears throat> site to kind of start with ideas and then see how it translates to other sites. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, knowing that that's extremely challenging <laughs> to do. Yeah. Um, but. Yes. Just, just to piggyback off of Virginia's suggestion, I, have, I, since we're talking about the, the reference to the DHCD and the suggestion of things that can be put in other people's guidelines, um, have, is it possible to look at other communities that have downtown smart growth districts to see what are talk among your colleagues as to, in other towns as to whether or not they have faced the same issue of existing, um, existing uh, areas within the, 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 the overlay district? And whether or not they have perhaps addressed any of this in their guidelines, mm -hmm. and take a look at the, either their subdistrict guidelines or their existing guidelines to see if they have any suggestions. On it. I looked at a few, but I didn't see anything that was outstanding to what we yeah. were looking for in terms of setbacks and percentages and everything. So, but I'm sure there's a few towns that I haven't looked at that possibly. I might go back like slightly further than recently. Mm -hmm. You know, see if there's anything that has gone past the tipping point and what they did well, prior the, to that. What do you mean exactly, Rachel? Uh, thinking about what's the town um, next to Framingham, Natick. They've got a, an interesting little downtown area that over the past 15, 20 years has become more walkable, for example. So, mm. and, um, you know, are there anything that we can learn from how they did that. They have brought 
commercial in there, but also it's it's kind of kept a historic character and added a walkability element to it that I don't think it had before. So yeah. things like that. <laughs> it's the um, smart growth um, smart growth district is relatively young in terms of the uh, state laws. I mean, it's what ten or twelve years total, I think. Um, Slightly. And I'm I'm afraid that Reading is on the forefront, <laughs> <laughs> which is one reason we continue continually have issues with it. <laughs> but that's but that is a good idea. Yeah. You know, it probably it probably is exactly the point where we should look at what other communities have done. Or even maybe somebody at the D has it. If there's language in there that references the capacity to do this, maybe somebody at the D would have some some thoughts also, or other examples. Maybe. Yeah. The if then concept, because I did email DHCD, mm -hmm. I think is sort of a new thing. Um, but your points noted, and we can definitely yeah. look and see what we can find out from other communities. Yeah, I would be hard pressed to know off the top of my head which other communities have the, uh, implemented the smart growth. There's a, it's on the website, there's a list and all. Okay. There's a, a decent number. But not many with the downtown. There's uh, only a okay. handful of downtown smart <coughs> districts. So I know that there's, there's some where they've taken uh, industrial areas and, and yeah. redeveloped them. Yep. That is the most common yeah. uh, application of it. A few others do have sub districts that do seem to work for them. Yeah, that's a lot depending on uh, pre existing conditions. Yeah. Right. And that's, a, that's an in the box idea. Like it's something that DHCD knows how to deal with and knows what the process is. Right. Um, but it's not exactly what we think we need here. So. Mm. Yeah, we will take that under advisement. Okay. Ms. Adams, do you have a comment? No, I'm just anxious to see it progress. Okay. You know, I think I think we do need to, to um, progress Second. it because it's going to happen um, regardless. Yes. Yeah. As we certainly as we as we're starting to march down uh, yeah. Main Street. Okay. The, uh, I was happy to see the the house with the big red X is gone. So happy. <laughs> <laughs> so happy. It only took Dynamics 10,000 hours of staff time to make that happen, but we're happy to do it. Is order. there anything <laughs> planned? I was actually going <laughs> to forget the court order. <laughs> Folks have been asking me, that, you know, do we have any plans? I was like, mm, not I that I think heard. so, yeah. yeah. No, that was... Yay, good job. <laughs> code enforcement. <laughs> um... But yeah, we can okay. start to look at drafting up some language. Just put some ideas on paper for you guys to talk about. Um, yeah, try yeah. to have some visuals to go with them. That would help. Um, I mean, the, um, it's hard to focus on things in between meetings. Yes. So our next meeting is um, April 9th, and we can put it, uh, we'll put it under other, we have a few, actually a few applications that night, so we'll put it under other business. Um, okay. And then depending on how the night goes. If it's not super late. <laughs> yeah, I mean, either... Talk about that. Uh, if we should probably put the item on the agenda for April and for the, May, the meeting in right. May. Yeah. Um, and because April might be uh, challenging with town meeting coming up and elections and so on and so forth. But the night that'll be over. Town meeting will not even be April 4. <laughs> we are going to put it on the 9th. We'll also put it on May 7th. Um, but the 9th, the agenda is getting kind of crowded. So it's either going to be a very late discussion, probably, or potentially not, not at all. Yeah, it might, it might be the time to distribute. 
what we've discovered. I was going to say, like, maybe can you give us homework that night mm -hmm. and we'll bring it to the next one? <laughs> Yes, yeah. where you know we—it's tough right. to generate between the the breaks. Yes. But if there was something, you know, right. here's your marching orders. That might be sure a little clearer. And there'll, there'll be a bigger gap between the April and May meetings. Like right now, right. we have two weeks, which goes by quickly. Um, yeah. But there'll be a bigger gap. So. Okay. So do we want to? I guess next is the uh, approve. approval of the minutes. Yeah. I didn't find anything to comment on. Yeah. Do we have a motion? I'm sorry. Motion to accept the minutes from uh, February 12th. Second. All in favor? All right. So what have I missed? Uh, any other topics? Magic, magic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what? What was the problem with the print vector design? I read that and it wasn't clear what the. They um, started nailing uh, oh, those signs. signs to telephone pole and oh, utility oh, pole. Okay, so it wasn't okay. their sign on Main Street. No, oh, no. Okay. They Fine. they took some liberties and put the um, yeah. wind flags on the ground. Yeah. The big, you know, <laughs> open. Right. That's specifically prohibited. Again, countless hours were spent on staff <laughs> time. <laughs> multiple staff people. Um, and multiple. And it took them four days to take them down. The grand opening signs, which grand opening was over after four days, so that worked for them. <laughs> the, for the last time I got to explain it for the 52nd time at the counter, I will say, um, I think we were finally connecting on this. It's the learning curve, though. I yes. Know perfect is right yep. now. Yeah. <laughs> I think we got it, and then um, they took the wind flags down, and they they took the sign off of the utility pole that they nailed on there. So. And then the higher now hiring signs just got put in the window. In the window. Yes, yeah. Right. Which, which you can see very easily. Also yeah. not right really thing. allowed, but yeah. it's, uh, uh, it's yeah. like how many right. arguments could we <laughs> didn't have the bandwidth to continue. <laughs> uh, uh, well, the good news is that they're a thriving business. Yeah, or yeah. appear to be. Definitely. Creating two traffic jams on 28. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have a traffic jam in my kitchen at the moment. <laughs> so, yeah. Do we have the? So you know, uh, my father's in California, and I was so surprised by all the the like men holding signs. You know, they do the. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. It's <laughs> like this is. Interesting job opportunity, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I'm assuming it's because you're not allowed to have a sign standing, so you can have a human being. Yes, being a sign. Yes. But, well, yeah. also to your flexibility in what the sign says, when you can just swap it out every day right. with something different. Yeah. They're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Anything else? Nothing else. Um, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. We are adjourned. All right.